The day has finally arrived. It's 4.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning. While most people are sleeping, a small group of dedicated athletes are totally awake, full of nervous anticipation, completely focused on the race they are about to undertake. A race that has taken months of preparation, untold personal sacrifice, and an unprecedented level of commitment to compete against themselves. I don't do this to beat other athletes. I do this to beat just one person, me. On a small tropical island, only 147 kilometers from the equator, 1,260 individuals have journeyed from 37 countries across the globe with a single unifying purpose, to swim 1.9 kilometers, cycle 90.1 kilometers, and then run 21.1 kilometers. If they succeed, they will have achieved what few people ever have. They will have finished one of the toughest triathlon events in the world, the Ironman 70.3. a.m. and the registration area is buzzing with activity. The queues are long as athletes jostle to get their race numbers stamped and their timing chips attached so they can spend a few precious moments on final preparations. Some are serious, others more jovial. But whatever the mood, an undercurrent of tension is in the air in anticipation of the trial ahead as they all strive to become Iron Men. But what exactly is an Iron Man? In 1978, a group of athletes in Hawaii wanted to know who was the fittest. To settle the question, Navy Commander John Collins and his wife suggested combining the Waikiki Rough Water Swim, the Around Oahu Bike Race, and the Honolulu Marathon into one monster event. Whoever finishes first will be deemed the fittest, and we will call him an Iron Man. From these informal beginnings, the Iron Man series has now grown into a worldwide phenomenon. In 2005, a shortened version was created, the Half Iron Man, now known as the Iron Man 70.3. Yeah. Our pro fields line up on the shores of the South China Sea. The air is cool, the sun has just risen. It's almost 7.15 as they prepare to lead out the first of seven waves of swimmers through what looks to be very rough water. They look surprisingly relaxed as they wait for the starter to blow his whistle. Today's 1.9 kilometer swim begins alongside Badok Jetty, following a rectangular course set parallel to the coastline to avoid the shipping lanes. The competitors will round five boys before ending just yards along the shore from where they began. A large crowd has gathered on the beach. The officials hold them back as the hugely anticipated moment arrives and the Aviva Ironman 70.3 Singapore Triathlon 2007 is underway. At this level, any advantage counts, but as the swim is only 25 minutes out of an expected four-hour event, it's more about pace, not race, as the pros focus on keeping in touch with the pack rather than wasting valuable energy trying to break away. Matthias Hecht from Switzerland and Brazilian Ronaldo Colucci forge a small lead, but Brit Steven Bayliss and Andrew Johns are not shaken that easily. Wearing the coveted number one is Craig Alexander from Australia. Following on from his world championship winning performance in Florida last November, Craig has already won four Ironman 70.3 events this year. With the full distance Ironman world championship in Kona, Hawaii only six weeks away, we asked him how this race fits into his schedule. It seemed to fit in well. I'm preparing for Kona in another six or seven weeks. And I thought this would be a good test of my fitness and also similar conditions to what I'm gonna face in Kona. This is the largest professional field for an event held outside the US this year. With this many high caliber athletes, we are guaranteed a fiercely contested event.
the age group women line up for the start of wave two. There's a clear camaraderie amongst them, but they all know that once the whistle blows, they're on their own. Even starting in waves, the sheer numbers of swimmers in the water at once create a giant washing machine-like effect as hundreds of arms and legs flail around. It would be all too easy to choke on a mouthful of water or pick up a bruise as they look for clear water ahead. The second boy bobs quietly in the early morning sun in stark contrast to the fast-moving swimmers just about to round it. The women are starting with their male counterparts today, and they are definitely holding their own. Amongst them is last month's Ironman Korea winner, Chrissy Wellington from the UK, and favorite, Belinda Granger, the five times Australian champion. This 37-year-old Australian turned pro in 1999. She trains with her teammate and husband, Justin Granger, and has already seen success this year at Ironman Lake Placid and the Orca Challenge in Wanaka. The spectators have also turned out in force, and hundreds have made their way to the East Coast Beach to support Asia's first 70.3 event. As the first amateur men's wave gathers, you can see a range of emotion on their faces. You can't help but wonder what makes them do it. For some, it's the personal satisfaction of meeting the challenge. For others, it's so much more. Lin Tao Wei was an aspiring young commando officer who was awaiting the birth of his first child when he was stricken with lymphoma and hospitalized for emergency surgery. For me, um, I, I'm taking this as uh, a life journey because you have to plan for that training, plan uh, progressively. You have to, to do things uh, within your limits, but at the same time, try to you know, push that limit a little bit further. And uh, I think I've learned uh, a lot th throughout this uh, uh, preparation. This is the largest wave yet, and it's an impressive sight as the first age group men head down the beach and out into the sea. Already, it's obvious that conditions are very tough. One of the PC athletic contingent, swimmer Fu Feng Ling, has gotten into trouble. But he is quickly rescued by members of the extensive water safety team that are on duty here today. While drama is happening elsewhere, the professionals are getting down to business, and they've almost reached the end of the swim leg. As they head to shore, the four early leaders, Ronaldo Colucci, Matthias Hecht, Andrew Johns, and Stephen Bayliss, are still together. Exiting the water, they've been joined by Cameron Watt, Ryan Milton, and Craig Alexander. The first woman out is Australian Maxine Sear, and she's opened up a small lead over the other ladies. But in the world of triathlon, the first out of the water is rarely the first over the finish line. So she has a lot of hard work ahead if she is to maintain her advantage. The leading group hustle to get out of their swim gear and onto the road as fast as possible. A minute behind the leaders, our next group emerge. Among them is Swiss champion Ronnie Schildnick for the men, and Australians Belinda Granger and Ali Fitch for the women. These days, the race is won and lost on the bike leg, so what happens here is crucial to the leaders. The pros are already on the road, but there are still over a thousand athletes in the water. It will be nearly an hour before all these age groupers have finished the swim. As Maxine Sear leaves transition one, she finds herself the early leader. But she knows that with the strength of the field behind her, this lead could be short-lived. With their swim over, the early men's leader is Brazilian Ronaldo Colucci in a strong time of 25 minutes, 28 seconds, closely followed by Matthias Hecht from Switzerland. With virtually nothing between them, we can expect a very tactical ride as they head towards the city. Halfway to the city, and Craig Alexander is looking very relaxed and well-placed. He is definitely the strong favorite to take the honors here today. 
The ride is a very technical one, with constant rhythm and gear adjustments needed to allow for the speed bumps and tight corners all along the seven kilometers of Singapore's scenic East Coast Parkway. The lead is constantly changing as the men alternate the role of pacemaker. The bike course starts with a one-off ride from Transition 1 along the East Coast Parkway. Then it's four loops around the city center, passing through the central business district. Around the Marina South Entertainment Area, over Benjamin Shears Bridge, and along Nicole Highway to the National Stadium. From there, it's back down Republic Boulevard and past the Champs Arena, where they will transition to the run. Back at T1, the bike park is starting to get very busy. There is now a constant stream of athletes changing, putting on shoes and running their bikes to the official mounting line. It's a very male-dominated picture, as only 10% of the field are women. Even less are Asian women. One of the few is 25-year-old Jeanette Wang from Singapore. When she's not making news, this dynamic woman is writing it as a sports correspondent for Singapore's Straits Times newspaper. But it's not easy being a pioneer. I think the biggest problem facing a woman athlete in Asia is the culture, how we should get married as soon as possible, have babies, focus on your family, and not waste time on doing a sport. Having already competed in Hawaii, this Southeast Asian Games competitor and accomplished triathlete also shares her experience online through her blog where she hopes to inspire others. Responses come when women and men write to me on how I inspire them to take up the sport or to push themselves further and that's really great. The age group athletes are often described as the heart and soul of triathlon. Worldwide, thousands of dedicated amateurs fit in hours of training around already full work and family lives. They spend thousands on equipment, coaching and nutrition, and they do it all for the love of the sport. Like number 153, American Sherry Coons, who has flown over to compete in the women's 40 to 44 year old category, and she is setting a very good pace indeed. So as Sherry and the rest of the amateur field head down Benjamin Shears Bridge to start their four loops of the city, we catch up with the pros who are well into the bike leg. As they head along Nicole Highway, Cameron Watt and Matthias Heck spar for the lead. The course is relatively flat, so the pros are averaging nearly 45 kilometers an hour. Even though most of it is tight and technical, on this stretch, they can hit close to 60. It's speeds like this that separate the men from the boys. Singapore is an exotic mix of Chinese, Malay, Indian, and European influences. Everywhere you look, the old and the new are blended together. There is lots to see and do, and our field will pass many of the landmarks as this is the first ever triathlon to be run almost completely in the heart of a city. With 30 degree temperatures and an average humidity of 90%, the danger of heat stroke is an additional challenge that triathletes must face. The field passed the Esplanade Art Center and along Collier Quay, watched in frustration by the favored Craig Alexander. I don't know, I think just coming around that corner down there, going past the, the transition area, I just hit a, a bump. And I don't why, know. Why, why can't you change your tyre though? Well, I just can't get the friggin' tyre off the rim. The guy who's glued it on's obviously put too much glue on there. Normally you can just roll them off. I just can't roll it off. With Craig Alexander out, the race is now wide open. Along Shenton Way, through the central business district, and out onto the winding leafy roads of the Marina South Entertainment Area, the pros and the age groupers are now completely mixed together. It will be difficult to judge where opponents are, especially for the women, who are very spread out. Early swim leader Maxine Sear has been overhauled and is now back down the order. Marinda Carfrey the 26-year-old Australian who came third at the 2006 World Championships has moved up to second place. And Dutch duathlon champion Ivan van Vlerken is riding hard to make up a near six-minute deficit after a disastrous swim leg. Benjamin Shears Bridge rises 20 meters above the Singapore River, and it's a long, steady one-kilometer climb to its apex. Swiss champ Ronnie Schildneck has caught the lead group and there are now five riders in tight contention, 
as the men prepare for their last lap of the city. Since emerging on the world triathlon scene in 2002, this 28-year-old duathlon champion from Zurich has been moving steadily up the ranks. He has won numerous races, including the Swiss Ironman in June this year. In the early morning excitement, many overinflated their tires. As the air expands in the hot conditions, there are numerous flats occurring across the field. The tight bends are also proving treacherous for some of the beginners. They're having difficulty judging their speed and line, especially in the downhill areas around Rochard Road. Chrissy Wellington has moved up to fourth in the women's race. This bubbly 30-year-old Brit burst onto the pro scene after she won the age group world championship in 2006. At the Champs Arena, Juani Schildnack has outridden the field to take a slight advantage over Matthias Hecht and the UK's Andrew Johns. The fourth man in is Brazilian Ronaldo Colucci, who may be dropping off the pace a little. With two-thirds of the race complete, Ronnie Schildnick has pulled himself into the lead with a very impressive bike ride, more than two minutes faster than his fellow professionals. But that was to catch up. So with a 21.1-kilometer run in Singapore's tropical climate, any one of these four men could be our champion. Stephen Bayless has the fastest transition and is off along Esplanade Walk, but only by seconds, as Ronaldo Colucci and Ronnie Schildnack are hot on his heels. Today's run takes the athletes twice through the scenic Marina Promenade Park, twice around the historic Padang, and past the iconic Esplanade Theater to a finish at the New Champs Arena Floating Stadium. It's a 21.1 kilometer trial that in this heat and humidity will prove a daunting final third to the race. Norwegian Oyvind Johansson and Kiwi Brian Rhodes are the next pair out of T2. With them is our women's leader, Australian Belinda Granger. The next pro group reached T2. Marinda Carfrey is currently second for the women, but she has a lot of work ahead of her if she hopes to catch Belinda. This 25-year-old from Brisbane, Australia is definitely a rising star. She came third at the 70.3 World Championships in Florida and is now training for the full Ironman at Kona, Hawaii. She could become the first woman to be successful at all three distances. Brazilian Ronaldo Colucci has finally broken clear. At 21, he is far from his endurance peak, but he is still managing to maintain a very fast pace in the tropical heat and humidity. Ronnie Schildnick is not to be beaten so easily. He clawed back a two minute deficit on the bike and is less than a minute behind, so it's anybody's race. Matthias Hecht is still in contention, but it looks like the conditions may be getting the better of him as he starts to fall behind the leaders. Back on Esplanade Walk, Belinda Granger is consolidating her commanding lead. With an impressive two hour, nine minute and 31 second bike ride, she was nearly seven minutes faster than her closest rival, Marinda Carfrey. While the pros head into their final lap, the age groupers are now only starting theirs. One of them is Charles Anderson. A senior executive working in Asia, Charles Anderson is a dynamic individual who leads from the front. But with all the pressures of today's international business environment, why would he choose such a demanding sport as triathlon? I didn't choose triathlon, triathlon chose me. My brother suggested we should celebrate our 50th birthday by running in the London Triathlon, which is what we did, and that's how I got started. He's as passionate and dedicated about his sport as he is about his family. But how does he balance this with a jet setter's lifestyle? Well, I found that by, by planning ahead and involving the family, you can achieve a really good balance. So we have some great holidays in triathlon destinations, and the children love doing that, and my partner loves doing that, and it's a good way of achieving the balance we want. The athletes have a great view of the city and Merlion Park, as they loop from the stadium to the Esplanade Theater and back. Hydration is definitely an issue, and all the runners pay careful attention to it. Bella Comerford, this year's Ironman UK winner, takes extra water to combat the heat. 
If able-bodied athletes are feeling the effects, then imagine what it is like for the physically challenged competitors, but they don't want any special treatment. Running proudly in this group is Ong Po Hua, a 26-year-old intellectually disabled athlete from Singapore. Rising before the sun, she has already put in an eight-hour workday before heading home to take care of her family. And then she trains to be a triathlete. Now that is a challenge. Under a midday sun, nobody misses a chance for a drink or a cool shower. Back on Nicole Highway, the cyclists and runners eye each other on the road back to the stadium. When your legs are weary, there is nothing like a cheering crowd to raise your spirits. And the run through the floating platform is everyone's favorite, especially for the last time when they finally get to finish. And into that finishing stretch comes Ronaldo Colucci. The young Brazilian is all smiles as he rounds the last corner. And he wins the Aviva Ironman 70.3 Singapore 2007 in a time of 3 hours, 49 minutes and 59 seconds. I was so happy to, to keep it going fast in the end and when I dropped running with around 10k to go, I just keep it as fast as I could to the end and well, today was a good day to win. After nearly four hours, Ronnie Schildneck comes second, only 40 seconds off the pace. He still has plenty of energy to celebrate his finish in a time of 3 hours, 50 minutes and 39 seconds. Steven Bayliss is third in 3 hours, 54 minutes and 37 seconds. Andrew Johns from the UK came fourth, and Aaron Farlow from Australia was fifth. Despite the heat, Belinda Granger still looks fresh. She crosses the finish line to beat the rest of the field by almost six minutes. She is the inaugural woman's champion with a time of four hours, 11 minutes and 23 seconds. Marinda Carfrey was a distant second. Chrissy Wellington, third, two minutes behind her. Australia's Ali Fitch was fourth. And Ivan van Blurken of Holland was fifth. I think running in this sort of heat, it's not about running fast, it's just about running solid and um, trying to keep the pressure on and keep the same pace going for the whole 21 and that's what I really concentrated on doing today and you know I was able to pull off the win so I'm happy. Today's finishers experienced many emotions. Some hardly knew where they were. Others were focused on their performance. But Chin Jin Kyak of Singapore was focused on something completely different. His girlfriend, Esther Wong, thought she was just going to give him his medal. In return, he gave her a ring. It looks like the end of this race is going to be the start of the rest of their lives. So with love in the air, how did the rest of the field do? Some didn't make it and others barely did. But whether sharing the moment with their family or proving anything is possible, most were exhilarated to have achieved their goals. Just fantastic. We just look around, it is just a fantastic event. I am extremely tired, but it was a great event. The Aviva Ironman 70.3 Singapore Triathlon draws to a close. 1,260 people took up the challenge. They put themselves on the line, and over 1,200 of them achieved it, and can now rightly call themselves Iron Men.